If you can get a transplant, by all means, do so. I was diagnosed with kidney failure about eight years ago, and I had a transplant about a year and a half ago. My diet is a lot less restricted. Um, I have a lot more energy than I did when I was on dialysis, so out to uh, able to go out more, actually able to leave the city if I want to, you know, go on a vacation. You can have pretty much a normal life. You can travel around the globe. You can have any profession that you want to have. You can do any activity that you want to do. The only caveat is you have to think about it ahead of time and maybe plan a bit more than some other people have to do. Once someone has decided to get a kidney transplant, they start the evaluation and medical testing to see if a kidney transplant would be the right choice for them. This process can take many months, so it is important to get started as soon as possible. And they started with my heart. My dental work was okay. I've had a battery of tests to see uh, how my heart would, would hold up, uh, you know, under uh, surgery. Right? The purpose of the evaluation is to make sure that there aren't any diseases that would cause a problem with first undergoing the surgery and second limiting the success rate of the transplant. And the evaluation involves a physical exam, talking to a nephrologist, talking to a surgeon, and then tests. The tests that people will undergo involve blood tests, x-rays, EKGs, and then depending upon what medical issues are found, then people can undergo other special testing, such as heart testing, colon testing, ultrasounds, looking at the abdomen, looking at bones. And women will undergo mammograms and pap smears, and then men specifically looking for prostate problems. And it takes a, a while for people to get worked up which means that they have to be able to go through a surgery, so they have to be able to get a kidney implanted surgically into their bodies. Certain things need to ch be checked off before you make the team, you know, and um, so it's really important if that's the plan, if you want to be on the list, that you get that done right away and that you keep uh, your spirits up. <laughs> it's really part of what helps the ongoing process, because it is a process. There are two types of kidney transplantation, living donor and cadaveric, a kidney from someone who is not living any longer. A match must be found for someone to receive a kidney transplant. The matching involves complex testing of blood type and antibodies to determine if a kidney would be compatible. There are four main blood types, A, B, AB, and O. If you have a family member, a close relative, or even occasionally a friend who is willing to give you a kidney and uh, you match, then that's the best possible treatment. My sister Zelda, which is closest to me, she started getting worked up right away. She had to lose 50 pounds before she could give me a kidney. And the reason for that is she, she would be operating with only one kidney. And so therefore, they wanted to make sure that she didn't get into trouble by donating one of her kidneys to me. She thanked me, she said, because I saved her life. Trans transformed yeah. her life. Right. Because I tend to be a pretty private person, I didn't really want to ask people to give me their kidneys. I was definitely interested in being on the transplant list, but I was reluctant to ask family members and friends. Of course, I didn't initially tell everybody I met that I needed to have a kidney transplant, but my husband did. So the important message is tell people what's going on and ask them, and don't be afraid. If somebody wants to donate the kidney, they very much want to do that, they want to help. They also need to realize that in the process of the living donor being worked up, the living donor is worked up very carefully and they wouldn't be allowed to donate if they weren't healthy. And the other is that if you don't ask, you won't find out. And people really need to consider asking. People want to help you. You'd be surprised at the number of people who've been looking for their reason for being, their life's mission. Even though the first three people that were evaluated were not good candidates, they found out valuable information about their health status, things that they didn't know that they needed to address. So as a result of trying to help me, they ended up helping themselves. So as you see, everybody benefits in the process. So the best thing is to say, look, this is what's going on with my life right now. This is probably what's going to happen. My life would be much better, you know, if I get a transplant, because this is what I want to do with my life. These are my goals. These are my aspirations.
Now, if they have a problem with the ask, then a really good technique is to have a family member or friend come in, learn about the process, learn about the kidney disease, and then have them talk to folks about it. It's kind of something too hard for me to ask. The only possible matches for me were my younger brothers and sisters, and I personally didn't want to put them through that kind of situation. So I decided myself to just wait on a cadaver donor. A donor from a deceased kidney is very good and um, may last for many, many years too. My progress has been more than I ever expected as far as, you know, physically. The wait time for transplantation depends upon who you are. And who you are is determined by your ethnic background, by your blood type, and your gender. There are more African Americans who are blood type B. More donors, however, are blood type A. Usually people wait on the list anywhere from two to three or more years depending on their blood type and other genetic factors. Many times African Americans and other minorities don't get listed on the transplant waiting list and so it's really important to get that workup done and to complete that workup because you can't get listed on the transplant list unless you get the workup done. If your kidney transplant works, you're almost as good as normal except they have to take medications probably for the uh, rest of the time that your transplant works. The medicine was kind of overwhelming at first, but um, now it's been a year and a half, it pretty much got it down to routine. What you want to be sure is that you're taking the medications that are good for your immunosuppression, to take the medications that are good for antiviral, you know, and antibacterial, take the ones that are good for your heart, take the ones that are important for nutrition, and then any other special medications that you have to have. And at one point, I was taking 39 different medications. And if you just get a transplant and go back to business as usual, you're gonna be in the same boat that you were in in about two or three more years because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. The medications after transplant are associated with complications. The major ones have to do with increased risk for infections, increased risk for cancers, but the ones that most people feel or see have to do with maybe there's a change a little bit in the hair, there might be some acne that's associated with it, and occasionally people will develop diabetes as a consequence. That's more common in those individuals who um, are older, over 40, but also common in those people who are of um, minority backgrounds. I was gr happy to get the transplant. I actually couldn't believe that it happened. But I think the real challenge was that as my body adjusts to the medications, it was depressing for me to see my body go through some of the changes as I learned to live with the new kidney. And gradually I'm starting to get back to normal, so I'm feeling a lot better about that. If a patient doesn't take their meds, that could be a, a major cause of a rejection. Rejection is something where the kidney is attacked by the immune system and it can result in the loss of the kidney and people being very sick. It also, in order to treat, requires a lot more immunosuppression and can make the individual quite sick as well and it may not work. So it's very important that people continue to take their medications after transplant. Please make sure that you have a system in place that you know for sure that you took those meds and that you take them when you should take them. And if there's a, a chance where you think that affordability is an issue, then let your healthcare provider know because those meds have to be taken for the rest of your life. You need those to keep you alive. When you look at benefits, make sure you look for those transplant benefits. In many instances, insurance companies will carve out transplant benefits. They carve out medications for transplant or they have caps, lifetime caps on transplant benefits. This is an area that physicians don't always communicate about very much, but for some reason all my patients love to talk about it. You can have normal sexual relations, you'll have normal sensations. Um, sometimes gentlemen have a little bit more time with erectile dysfunction than they would if they didn't have kidney disease. The transplant can make it improve, but not always 100%.
having children may be a little bit more difficult and you have to plan, but it, it's very doable. Tell your physician that you want children. Your body gets ready and you get that donor man to be just like that. I was home in five days. Five days I was home. That's right.